check up on this thing, you know. Hey, looks like we're up and running. We're up and running. Give you guys a few minutes to join us. See what's going down. Hey, drop a comment when you're here. We're here, top five baits on a Thursday night, like always, every week, coming at you, answering fishing questions, talking about, uh, you know, bass life, people life, whatever kind of life we want to talk about. It's up to you guys. Whatever questions you ask, I will answer to the best of my ability. That's my promise to you. Good to see some of you joining us now. Fishing Freak Gomez first on the list. Appreciate it, buddy. Bobby Spain, Graham Rusko, Blake Horton. Blake Horton. That'd be really cool if you were related to Tim Horton because he's pretty good stick from what I understand. Hello, Stout Angler. What's up, Stout Angler? Appreciate you joining us. Uh, Trent Adams asked me a good general question right off the top. How long have I been into fishing? Um... Long time, since I was a little bitty boy. I've been doing it my whole life. I don't even remember the first bass that I caught because I was really, really young. So I apologize. My voice, man, them spring allergies and sinuses have been killing me, getting down into my throat, my chest a little bit. It's kind of lost me uh, lost me some, some voice, some vocals there. Mike Hinkle made it in. All right. Jack Bassin around. <laughs> Dude, that's such a great name, Jack Bassin around. I love that. Good job on that one. Appreciate you guys watching this. Jay Henry Bass Tackle with poor spelling. Um, still getting bites on Big Swim Bass. We're going to talk about Big Swim Bass tonight. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that topic a little bit tonight. So just hang in there for me, bud, and we'll, we'll go over that one. There's another question up here. Is fishing going to be good this weekend? <clears throat> I kind of doubt it. <laughs> Anytime you got a 38 degree morning in April, it's probably going to throw a kink in your pans, plans. Has Fork been on fire? Um, in some ways, yes. Any frog bite going good yet? Yeah, there's been a frog bite, but you know, these last couple cold mornings, these cold mornings for me have killed the frog bite. Uh, if you stick around long enough to wait till late in the evening, I would imagine they would kind of start biting it again. I stayed out pretty late today trying to get on some late in the day sight fish. We started a little later this morning and we were in there, we were really trying specifically to sight fish. Um, and we probably should have just been throwing a frog around because it probably would have caught fire on them because they were in there like crazy uh, in some grassy areas. So, Uh, what do I do when the lake's muddy? Uh, well, there's always cleaner water. When the lake's muddy, I just, I, I, I either, you know, sometimes I'll fish in that mud, but if I feel like there's more fish there, but, you know, here lately, I've, I've been spending a lot of time finding the cleaner water. Um, that's a big deal. It has been all spring just because of all the dirty water that we've had. So, um, you know, that's a good, good way to get going into the uh, top five baits. So that's a good segue right there. So we'll jump on into them. Hey, you asked about the frog? Guess what? It's in top five baits. The white frog has been the best, just like the sexy shad color or whatever, but the, the shad pattern frogs have been a little, have kind of been the best. I think that maybe because of how off color the water is, they like that harder color, but white has been the best color. My old yellow belly hadn't been doing the deal yet, but it's coming. Uh, right now, white has been a very good color. Buzzbait, and this is a new buzzbait I want to talk to you guys about. This one, it's really cool, man. This buzzbait is really neat. <clears throat> I'm a big fan of this. Well, if I can get it untangled from the line that's wrapped around currently. Okay. So this buzzbait right here is really neat. And what's cool about it is right now it's just a regular buzzbait. It'll squeal a little bit when you get that rivet roughed up. You can kind of hear that little squealing sound. Um... But what's cool about this is you can take and pinch it down, right? Get it down there, and this blade will actually start banging off this head. Um, we'll squeeze that down for you guys and get that ready. Hold on. So now, as that blade turns, it's going to thump that head. And it just makes it clink, 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 clink. I mean, it's loud and obnoxious. It's, it's a really neat buzzbait. It draws a lot of vicious reaction bites from fish. I've uh, been throwing that, you know, messing around, getting a few bites here and there on it. Uh, not as many as the frog, but getting some good bites on it. This thing right here gets a, gets a reaction from big fish. 
I kind of got a sneak peek at a bait at this bait last summer, and it worked really well. Um, so I'm probably going to be throwing this early morning in cloudy conditions off and on throughout the rest of the year. I really like this. It's, I got a pack. I want the package here for you guys. It's called Headbanger Rowdy Buzz. Um, Rowdy Buzz Lures at gmail.com if you want to send that guy an email to maybe order some. He's got all different sizes and colors. Uh, it's an individual, American assembled, American made. I believe that he's in Illinois, but uh, he sent me some of these not too long ago. Like I said, I got a sneak peek at them last year. I really like them. So, right there. Check that out if you're into buzzbait fishing. It's a lot of fun. This is a good one. All right, bear with me just a second. Let me get that one tied back down. And we shall move on to the next item on today's agenda. <clears throat> I left one of them up on the bottom. I have to go get it. All right, then I'm doing a lot of sight fishing. I mean, I'm doing a lot of sight fishing. That's primarily what I'm doing. I like to sight fish more than anything else this time of year. It's probably just because we have the short window to do it. But uh, the 3 8 ounce, 6 cents Divine Hybrid Jig in Grass Mutant Color has been very good on beds. It looks like a little brim. What's beautiful about this is... If you want to pitch it around shallow wood where you're not bed fishing, it's it's get, it's getting bit. If you want to swim it through flooded vegetation, it gets bit. It's just such a versatile jig, and it's such a good all-around color this time of year. And will continue to be because as soon as the bass are off beds, the bluegill will be on beds. And, it, man, it's phenomenal. It's really phenomenal. So, and then, of course, we got the Texas rig. And you guys have seen this before. I've got big 5 watt straight shank hook right here. I've got a 3 8 ounce weight, and I've got a bead in between to give me that old clicking noise right there. And just little compact creature bait of any kind is fine for bed fishing, really. Um, I'm throwing that electric blue just because it's a different color than what really anybody else is probably throwing. And when it comes to bed fishing, it doesn't matter. Like, the color and all that really doesn't matter. It's about their behavior. And I just try to throw something they haven't seen. Hang on, i got to grab one more rod off the deck of the boat. I forgot. Stay with me, people. Don't leave me. You're going to like this one. This is a good one. All right. Check that baby out right there. That is a brim patterned, custom painted brim pattern glide bait. That's the old Flow Glider 140 um, and that custom brim job. I really like this in areas where fish are bedding. What I can see, especially like if I'm just seeing males on beds, you can throw this kind of right down where those beds are, get parallel to the bank and work it down the line where those beds are lined up, and it will draw those females and show you like maybe they're a little bit deeper, maybe they're hanging out just out in front of the bed, but they'll show themselves to you. Sometimes you'll catch fish on it, but even more so than that, you'll actually get a good look at them because they'll come up and swipe at that bait. Um, so it's a really good tool for me right now. Now, since you asked about big swim baits, I'll address this topic. There is a very good big swim bait bite going right now for the people that know how to do it. Um, there's a few guys on the lake that are absolutely crushing them on big swim baits. Most days right now. Maybe not every single day, but most days they are killing them on these big swim baits. It's just a few guys doing it though. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> doing things the way I do, putting out content, giving away free information, helping people out has earned me some of a bad reputation amongst some other guides around the lake. The map chip thing that I do, they don't like it. I'm giving away fishing spots for free. They feel like I'm in some way, you know, maybe lessening the amount of people that want to take a guide trip because I'm giving them help for free. We all know that's not necessarily the case. People that are wanting a guide trip are going to want a guide trip regardless. There's nothing that substitutes for one-on-one -on -one time with a professional that does it every single day. There's nothing to substitute that. But that's what's in their head. They don't like me. I have been accused of putting other guys' spots on the map chip. I've been accused of holding, you know, crowding people out. I don't do any of this. I go out of my way to not do that because I know I am, a, you know, amongst the Lake Fork guys, I'm one of the more high-profile guys, more visible guys because of the social media stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and prove it right now. I know where those guys are throwing those big swim baits. I know exactly how they're doing it. I could go right in there and catch the same fish, but I won't do it. Even on days where I'm struggling, these cold mornings when you're sight fishing, 
it's a grind, guys. It's not easy to catch fish on those type of days. And I'm not going to those swim bait holes and jumping in those guys' stuff, even when they're not there. It's not going to happen. But there is a big swim bait bite, but it's very, very specific. The Smash Tech Convict, you know, that type of bite is there. The line through is the more popular one for this bite. Um, but it's very specific spots. It, it's windblown points on the main lake to secondary just inside the mouths of creeks. There's got to be bait present. There's got to be wind. The birds help you locate them. It's very specific. And if I was to suggest how to find that out, the only thing that I could tell you is you honestly need to hire one of those guys that's doing it. Check out Lake Fork Guides on Facebook. Look for the ones that are throwing big swim baits and crushing them the last couple weeks. And, and book one of them if you can. I mean, it's probably too late to book them now, but maybe next year. I mean, if you really want to learn that big swim bait bite, there's nothing better than getting in the boat with an expert that knows what he's doing with it. Um, that's the deal. That's, that's the deal. So there's a big swim bait bite to be had. I'm not going to disclose it because it's not my information. It's not a pattern that I was working or planning on working because I'm dedicated mostly to sight fishing and spawning fish this time of year. That's how I like to go about it. Um, I feel better about I'm gonna, every fish I swing on is going to be a good one when I'm sight fishing. So it is what it is. There's a bite out there. I wish that I could help you some more, but integrity-wise, I'm just not going to do it. And I apologize for being that way with you guys, but it's what I feel like I have to do to do the right thing. So um, that's what it is. All right, let me scroll back up. How's Lake Athens? Lake Athens has been phenomenal this year, guys. And for those of you who think it's getting too much pressure, it's holding up to it really well. I just got a picture a couple days ago from a giant that a customer and personal friend of mine uh, – that I actually kind of helped learn how to bed fish. He caught a giant off there the other day. So um, they're still fishing really good. Fish with Eric Wright caught three eight pounders on a smash tech swim bait. Well, Eric Wright's one of the guys that's crushing them on that swim bait pattern. Absolutely, amongst a few others. Eric Wright, phenomenal guy. He's in his you know lower half of his 20s. The dude started guiding when he was 19. He used When he was a teenager, he used to take everybody's money in tournaments out here. Eric Wright is a stud. Very good guy, too. Full approval, two thumbs up on Eric Wright. Hey, we just, how's my wife doing? Hey, my wife's doing really good, man. She's got, you know, hair's back. You know, I need to get her back on the channel soon and talk to all you guys. She's doing really well. I mean, life's basically back to normal. So something that you don't ever forget, it changes you a little bit forever when you go through the cancer deal, but she's doing really good. Cancer's gone, so. She, you know, all things are wonderful in that aspect. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Is the lizard doing good? A lizard will work um, right now. Any kind of Texas rig, the old Texas rig worm probably work right now. But, uh, you know, I'm, the Texas rig I'm using, I'm using it for sight fishing. And I like short, compact baits to help prevent them biting the tail and, and not getting a hook in their mouth. What lens color? You know, let's talk about glasses. I get asked a few times about glasses. And these are filthy dirty because it was windy and I got some spray when we were running around the lake today and idling out of coves. So my lenses are very crusty. But these glasses, I fished in Costas, I fished in Strike King S11s, I fished in all kinds of different glasses, high end to low end. And these are by far the best day in, day out sight fishing glasses I've ever owned. These are amphibias and this is the Baja lens. It's an amber lens. I like an amber lens for sight fishing. Uh, there are certain extreme conditions that call really bright days. You know, a smoke type of lens works really good. Really dark days, uh, like yellow lens works really good. But day in, day out, most days, and really on either the bright or the cloudy days, it still works really good. An amber lens. The amphibia lens, this is a Baja with the smoke mirror. This is the best set of glasses. I see them better with these than anything else I've ever used. So check those out. No, the, so I can't. We can't sell that menace guy. That's the deal. It's made by an individual that I know, a friend of mine, and you, we can't sell it because it's a patent violation. That's why it's not for sale anywhere. It's not a prototype or anything that we're going to be marketing. Um, it's just one of those deals. It's an upsize from a menace. It's a bigger bait. Those legs actually have more and better action, in my opinion. And I actually had a customer point that out to me today. Um, but it's a it's a bigger body, so it holds a bigger hook. Like there's a, it's it's just a better version of the menace to me. But we can't sell it because it would be a patent violation. 
I just answered the glasses. So Amphibia Baja colored lens with a smoke mirror. That's my favorite sight fishing glasses. We can't be covering up the old Sixth Sense logo, y'all. Good early pre-spawn baits and techniques. Uh, if you have grass, I really like a chatterbait. Now, since you just came out of ice, you probably won't have much grass. If you have grass, I really like a chatterbait. If not, a jerk bait's really good. A lipless crankbait's really good, and an umbrella rig, and a jig, whatever appropriate jig. Maybe it's a finesse jig. Maybe it's a bigger flipping jig. But those five things. If you want top five pre-spawn baits that are really good, a chatterbait, a lipless crankbait, a jerk bait, an umbrella rig, and a jig. There's your top five bait for pre-spawn for up north. Lake Tawakini has a good frog bite right now. That's good to hear. That's really good to hear. That's awesome. Is Little Caney good? Man, <clears throat> yeah, Little Caney's good. Little Caney's getting a ton of boat traffic right now, like insane amount of boat traffic right now. Real Fish 365 just joined us. We appreciate you, bud. How do you see them on beds in windy conditions? Get on the calm bank. <laughs> I mean, you know, you just got to do the best you can. You got to you got to get in the most protected areas that you can get in, and and you know really do some map study. And you know it helps me fish in Lake Fork as much as I do. I kind of know where those are without looking. I can just kind of well, the winds oh winds blowing that way. Let's go over there. So um, you know that's it. You just got to do a lot of map study and find some areas that look good for spawning, flat, calm backwaters of pockets um, that are protected from the wind that day. And then you just got to search all of them until you start seeing bedfish. All right, I know I missed some questions up here. How would you fish bass spawning on or under lily pads? Uh, I would flip to them. I'd flip a, flip a Texas rig to them. If I could see, even, see when I sight fish, I don't have to necessarily see the fish. Once I see him move and go back, if he'll, if he'll leave the bed and then go back to it before I quit seeing him as I'm easing down that through there, then I know where his location is, and I know he's dedicated to, he's committed to that bed. Uh, I don't have to see him to catch him. You just keep throwing there, and you just, if you sight fish enough, you can kind of play it out in your head what's going on down there, and you can get him to buy it. Favorite jig trailer? Smash crawl. All around jig trailer. Smash tech, smash crawl. It's just basic crawl bait. I trim it down a little bit and make it nice and compact. Uh, but I use a rage crawl a lot too. And then sometimes I use a chunk, but most of the time throughout the year, I'm using a smash crawl. Have I ever fished Lake Jacksonville? I have. It's been several years, like probably five, six, seven years. But I have definitely fished Lake Jacksonville. I do like it. I think it's a very good lake. I think it gets a bad rep for having a small fish because it's got a lot of spotted bass in it. But there's a lot of really big fish in Lake Jacksonville. They're a little bit harder to catch now that the grass is gone, but they're in there. Billy the Great. Thank you for calling me that. I, it's not true, but thank you. I had a softball practice to run for you little nice. Hey, I was just at, uh, I was, uh, my guy had his first baseball game this season on Monday, so good times. Coming down in the middle of the month, how do you think the fishing will be? Middle of the month will be great. We got a new moon coming up on like April 16th or something like that. There'll be a, a lot of new fish pulling in. You know, a lot of that water is still in the 60s. There's a lot of fish yet to spawn on Lake Fork that are coming on the next two moon cycles. The new moon on April 16th or somewhere in there. And then the full moon at the end of April. Uh, we got a lot more fish coming to bed. So it's going to continue to get better. Have I ever fished in Nebraska? Um, I, I lived in Nebraska for a little while. I don't think I did any fishing while I was there. I did a little bit of hunting. No fishing. The orange methiolate worm? No. No, I've never tried that orange methiolate worm that LFG throws. <clears throat> Ten days, and I hope to see you on the lake, Billy. Stay in Lake Fork Marina, and I hope I see you in the restaurant. If you're around Lake Fork Marina enough, you will probably see me. I'm around there a bunch. In fact, that's a great tie-in. I'll be there tomorrow night at 6 p.m. for our free seminar. So if you're in town this weekend, we got a free seminar at Lake Fork Marina tomorrow night at 6 p.m., be there or be square. Oh, I remember one of the questions one of you guys asked would 
a one-on-one -on -one competition between me and Lake Fork guy, Justin Rackley, on Lake Fork, who would win? Um, I could see it going either way. I mean, it always could when you got a guy, you know, Justin's really good. I th think I'm okay. I'm, I'm pretty good on Lake Fork, and Justin's really good, too. Um, you know, it would probably have a chance to go either way. I would probably give myself the advantage for sure right now. Odds on favorite just because I'm there every day and he's not. He's traveling around fishing other places. So I'm kind of a little bit more current up to speed with what's going on. But on a lake like Fork, man, you know, one or two bites can completely change the game in a five fish competition. Um, so it could honestly go either way. I mean, one of you, I mean, any of you guys could beat me on Lake Fork. All you got to do is get the right one or two bites and you can blow it out. So, go Astros. I pre appreciate that, T-Lo. That's right. Go Astros. For those of you that don't know, I grew up in, you know, north of Houston in the Conroe area, and I am an Astros fan for sure. Have been, have been since the Killer Bees days, back when they had Biggio, Bagwell, Derek Bell, all them boys. Good deal. Sounds like a challenge. Well, Rackley's a busy man. I'm, I'm a pretty busy man myself. That, that would be hard to line that schedule up but if me and him get together on fork again i will we will do a challenge video against each other i will try to make that happen the next time if if i get to get back in the boat with him on fork again best place right now in palestine on the stein i'll probably be heading to flat creek myself that's probably where i'll be going flat creek to the back maybe uh, actually i would go to flat creek early in the morning and then i would leave and go to high saw lead better and try to sight fish or throw a swim bait. They might have swim bait pretty good from what I understand on the middle to southern half of Palestine if you get in the right area. Old Pudge was a beast. I like Pudge. I used to catch. I was, I was a catcher in baseball in Little League, and I liked Pudge a lot. Will Clark was actually my favorite player, though. Kind of weird. He wasn't didn't play for a Texas team. He... Uh, he didn't play the position I played, but Will Clark was my favorite player growing up. He did play for the Rangers for a little bit, actually, but he was mostly a giant when I was a big when he was my favorite player. The colder weather uh, slash water and ice out recently. Do you think Moon Phase still plays a role for the bite like it does during the summer month? No, nah. for you guys up north, uh, I don't really pay. I mean, I I think the Moon Phase kind of gets them a little more active, maybe, but. Overall, I don't start paying attention to the moon face until my water gets around the upper 50s. Now, smallmouth are a different temperature, and I know nothing about smallmouth, so I don't know. But largemouth, specifically speaking of largemouth, uh, the water needs to be in the upper half of the 50s, 57, 58. And once it gets to that temperature, then I'm going to look at when my next moon phase is, and that's when your first spawners, <coughs> excuse me, your first spawners will, without a doubt, show up. How would I fish spawning bass on lily pads? I already asked it. Spawning bass under lily pads, I would just try to see them. Like I would try to get in the lily pads and make them move. And as long as they would move and then come back, if I could see them leave and kind of stay in that general area or head back towards the bed, uh, I would just mark that spot in my mind, find something to define it by, and then get out away from them and blind cast to them and just pitch to them over and over with a Texas rig. Uh, what do I think the cold front will do this weekend to the fishing port? So the cold, guys, here's the thing. If you're not sight fishing and you're not fishing like, you know, really, or, you know, if you're not fishing the really super, you know, dedicated to spawning bass, the cold front's not going to affect them hardly at all um, because it's not going to drop the water temp, in, especially in the main lake. It's not going to affect the water temp hardly anything. So if you're one of those guys fishing those windblow points, or fishing, you know, timber off the bank or something, it's really not going to affect you any at all. None. Um, maybe a little bit slow down of the bite, but not much at all. Now, if you're doing what I'm doing, you're sight fishing, throwing a top water in the morning, frog and all that, it's going to slow you down in the morning, but the minute it starts to warm up or the minute they get sunshine, they're going to jump right back on the beds and you can, you can catch them again. New York sucks horribly. I could probably agree with that without even being there. The thrill is gone. I done missed something. I missed something from T-Lo. He is always cracking me up on here. The thrill is gone. All right. I'm trying to keep up. Uh, what's the best way to peg weight on a Texas rig? Yes. 
Bobber stopper is my preferred way to uh, peg a weight on Texas rig. Has the water cleared up? It's yeah, a little. It's taken it a long time. There's there's cleaner areas that you can find though. That there are some cleaner areas you just have to hunt them down. All right. Any more questions? You might want to drop another question. And maybe if I missed one that's way up high, drop me another one. I'll drop it again and I'll answer. Um, but yeah, I guess that's it. So it's springtime. We got some crazy weather. <laughs> oh, will the thrill. <laughs> Very nice, T-Lo. Very nice. You always make me laugh in the middle of these, and I appreciate that so much. That's so great. Will the thrill Clark. Love that dude. I'll never forget. He was playing the Astros one time when I was a little kid. And my mom knew somebody that went to college or high school with him or something. She knew him. And, uh, of course, he's down there in the dugout, and there's kids behind the dugout trying to get autographs. Everybody's hollering at all the players, you know. And uh, everybody, they're just kind of ignoring them. They did their autograph signing already. They're done. And my mom walks down there, and I can't remember the lady's name, but she goes, Hey, Will, Will Clark, such and such told me to come see you. And he immediately turned around and stared right at her. And uh, my mom said, Yeah, so-and-so, da 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 and so Will actually waved us over down the baseline. We walked over there, and I got to sit there. And my mom talked to him for a couple minutes, and I got to sit there and have, like, a five-minute conversation with Will Clark before the game. And I was, like, shaking the whole time. I was probably, like, nine or ten years old. It was so awesome. Will the Thrill. He was the man. I know what – I remember why I liked him so much now. Our Little League team – my stepdad always coached us in Little League. And our Little League team – was all we were always the Giants because my stepdad liked the uniform colors, the black and orange. So we always were the Giants, and so that's why I kind of watched the Giants, you know, pro team, and that's why I liked uh, Will Clark so much because he was their best player at that time. Fishing in tournament Saturday, the windy shoreline has mostly docks and rock. Less windy side, shallower has mostly timber. Where would you start? Very murky water all over the lake. Probably, um, it's not a lot to go off of. I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, I mean, it depends on how you want to fish. If you want to fish for spawning bass, you need to fish the calm side. If you want to fish for, you know, pre-spawn or post-spawn bass, you need to fish the windy side. If you want to throw moving baits and stuff, you got to fish the windy side. If you want to slow down, and throw the weightless plastics and such as that, then fish the calm side. Was just at Lake Fork last weekend, caught a 10 pounder at Birch Creek, flipping a blue flake crawl. Did exactly what you said and it paid off. My man, thank you. Hey, text me a picture of that if you can, Brad Boyle. Text me a picture of that 10 pounder if you get a chance, man. My number's on my website, Facebook page, it's everywhere, it's easy to find. Oh, somebody got the map card. It said it loaded up nicely. We added a lot of spots. And he's recommending the card. Thank you very much. Dan Wubker, Wubker. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but thank you very much for that endorsement there. Thank you. How much longer? You know, I guess I, I get asked this question a lot by customers and everything else. How much longer is the spawn going to last? Guys, there will be bass spawning in Lake Fork this year, most likely, through the end of May. People are always shocked when they hear that. But last year, they started February 18th. I caught my first bed fish actually locked on, looked at him, saw him, caught him off a of bed on February 18th last year. And I caught my last one in like May 7th or 10th or something like that. So it lasts until the end of May. It's just a couple more weeks. And they started three or four weeks later than they did last year. So uh, I would anticipate it lasting through the end of May, maybe even peaking into June if you really want to hunt down the last few. <laughs> T. Lowe says, he's glad he amuses me. I'm by far the fu most fun person he's ever fished with. Well, thank you. That's my guarantee to all my customers. I can't guarantee fish catches. Some days we catch them. Some days we don't like everybody else. Um, I like to think we have a better than average chance than most people do, but that's okay. We have our good days and bad days. One thing I will guarantee you is we will win the fun tournament every day. We're coming in first place. I'm undefeated. There's nobody has more fun in their boat than I do. We're going to have a good time when you get out in old red. See her right back here. Ain't she sexy? Look at old Red back there just chilling, boy. That's a good looking girl right there, I'm telling you. Uh, I've never fished Lake Brownwood. Guys asked me if I fished Lake Brownwood, never fished it. 
do I know any good, do I know any fishing YouTuber in Tennessee to get some good tips from? I don't know any fishing YouTubers from Tennessee, honestly. Oh golly, that's a big old pig. I ain't got my voice right now. I can't do my Sean Grigsby right now. I ain't got the voice. <laughs> Website address, yourlakefortguide.com. Everything you can find uh, me under everything, Your Lake Fort Guide. I'm, I'm Your Lake Fort Guide on Facebook. I'm Your Lake Fort Guide on YouTube. I'm Your Lake Fort Guide on Instagram. Please follow on all three of those. And if you want me on the website, I'm YourLakeFortGuide.com on the World Wide Web. Shad spawn should be getting close. That water is going to have to get a little warmer. We need that water to get up in the mid-70s range. Uh, shad spawn should be getting pretty close, maybe possibly here in the next two or three weeks. It's, it's a, Tom Lowe says old red was the dangest dog. No, it's old red was the dangest boat I'd ever seen. She had a hull that could run a four foot swell. She's a skeeter boat running machine. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got a whole song made up for old red. Don't you worry about that. Fishing geek. Somebody's recommending fishing geek. I guess for the Tennessee with good Tennessee guy with good tips. Check out fishing geek. I have to check that out myself. I like seeing other guys. Timmy Horton. Somebody said Bill Dance. <laughs> y'all remember the Bill Dance song? Have y'all ever heard Ronnie Kelly sing the Bill, my version of the Bill Dance song? Ronnie Kelly gets in the boat and he always sings that, well, I'm going fishing with Billy Lawson today. <laughs> I can't believe I'm singing on a live stream. And uh, we're losing signals. So I'll see. You. Oh, it's back. We're back. Signal's back. Signal's back. Everybody hold on. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that's it. Check out yourlakefortguide.com for the map chip. Uh, these hoodies, we still got quite a few of these hoodies left. So I ordered bigger on these and then we didn't sell as many of these as we did the shirt. So it's going to be 38 degrees. If you want a hoodie, you know, we still get some cold days in April. You might want you a hoodie. Go ahead and order it on up. But, uh, other than that, man, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys more than you could ever know. It, it is, I literally wake up every morning and live my dream. Uh, it's because of people like you. So thank y'all so much. I can't say it enough, but yep, I guess that's it. If you go to SixCentsLures.com, punch in that code, you're like Fort Guide for a 10% discount, and we will see you guys next time right here on your Lake Fort Guide.